Welcome back to another episode of the Gun Collective News. I'm John Patton, and I would love to have your help to get this channel over 400,000 subscribers. If you could tell a couple friends that maybe want to get subscribed, something like that, that'd be great. I would really appreciate it. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content enough to keep coming back every week and maybe tell a friend or two. And they tell two friends and they tell their friends and so on and so on and so on. Now, the news. We're starting this week off with a bit of a disappointment. Palmetto State Armory has been, I guess, on a bit of a tear over the last few years. They've had a bunch of big wins and have made a bunch of guns that people were kind of just begging for, except for one. Cameron Tapler, who works for them, just announced in a video that they will be shelving or hitting an indefinite pause on the STG44 project. I actually had Cameron on the TGC podcast not long ago. There's a link in the description. Go watch it. It's pretty cool. He's a great guy. Now, for those that don't know, PSA actually acquired this STG44 project from a company called Hill & Mac Gunworks, who essentially took a bunch of pre-orders and then never delivered due to a bunch of different reasons. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not positive if people actually ever lost money, got their money back. And as it turns out in this situation, that gun was so far from production ready that even PSA's engineers couldn't make it come to be. And now it's on hold so they can focus on stuff that will actually work and sell. It's nice to see a big company actually have some transparency about their stuff they're working on and leave behind stuff that's just not working so the public doesn't later become a beta tester. Winchester just announced that they are coming out with a full line of optics called Supreme. The line includes a couple range finders, some spotting scopes, binos, and some magnified optics as well, all of which are under 400 bucks MSRP, which is kind of surprising with a name like Supreme. You'd figure it'd be like really, really high quality and whatnot. I have yet to put my eyes behind any of these and look through them, so I can't speak to their quality exactly, so I'll let you guys speculate on it down in the comments. Hornady announced a bunch of new products this week. Obviously, as per usual with them, there was a bunch of reloading stuff like an aluminum loading block, a power case trimmer, and some small batch match bullets for more consistent loads for high volume matches. But they also had some stuff that's not boring as f They said they're now making ammo for the 6GT cartridge, which isn't a new cartridge, but doesn't necessarily have a lot of factory support, so that's cool. But the biggest thing here is the birth of something called the 338 Arc. Think of this like the 300 Blackouts sort of bloated older brother. It's been eating too many carbs or something. I don't know, it's bigger. There are two types of ammo on launch, a 175 grain Hornady black load, which is said to leave a 16 inch barrel at just under 2100 feet per second. And the one that actually matters is the subsonic load that uses a 307 grain bullet and leaves a 16 inch barrel at 1050 feet per second, AKA subsonic. That means it will also be very subsonic out of a shorter barrel as well. The key here is that unlike 8.6 Blackout, which has to fit into an AR-10 size receiver, this 338 Arc will fit into an AR-15, and it can use some of the same projectiles. Unfortunately, you don't really have the ability to play with the Arc in terms of like seating length, seating depth, and maybe heavier projectiles like you might with the 8.6, but this is gonna be super interesting overall. My understanding is that the twist rate that's getting good results from the 8.6 is a one in three twist, meaning every three inches the bullet has one full rotation. Well, Hornady is recommending a simple one in eight twist for this new 338 arc. As with any new cartridge, this is gonna require industry support for firearms and parts. And just like other arc and PRC cartridges, Hornady has done that with brands like Aero Precision, Brownells, PSA, Primary Weapons, and a few others. I'll be very interested to see how this pans out. I mean, I love new cartridges. I think this is cool. Big, heavy bullets, that's always fun. And I'd love to get some feedback from you guys down in the comments while I tell you about this week's sponsor, Medical Gear Outfitters. Whether you're looking to get an IFAC for yourself like the Civilian Medical Trauma Kit, or maybe something a little bit more diverse to keep in your truck like the Overlander First Aid Kit, They've got you covered. 
They even have one called the Mom First Aid Kit that has everything you can think of for minor boo-boos all the way up to major trauma. These kits from Medical Gear Outfitters will help you stay prepared for anything and to make it even more affordable than it already is, use the code TGC10 for 10% off at medicalgearoutfitters.com. Big thanks to Medical Gear Outfitters for sponsoring this week's video. Sorry if I sound like crap, by the way, guys. I, I'm a little bit under the weather. In other news, Franklin Armory has a new version of their binary triggers for Glocks. And they're saying that this is the first ever binary trigger for your Glock 19. Except that's only like partially true. Any binary that would fit something like a Gen 3 17 should also fit a 19. However, their system requires you to use their slide, which makes it specific for guns that are in that Glock 19 size. And the thing I find absolutely insane is that their binary kit costs more than the MSRP of a Glock 19, which you would be installing it on. 900 is the MSRP for this kit. It's a trigger and a slide. In fact, that's almost double what I've seen some used Gen 3 19 selling for. And like, that is just flat out silly. I like Franklin Armory's products, but damn. CNH Precision has a new optic this week called the EDC Enclosed, and it's an RMSC footprint optic that is enclosed, like the name says. They claim it'll have 50,000 hours battery life, it has a circle, dot, reticle, like circle, and then a dot in the middle, and the MSRP is 275. That's not horrible if it's not an absolute piece of <laughs> And in new gun news, Bushmaster released a series they're calling the v Radicator. The way I look at this is that it's a modern approach to a varmint style AR. They all come in 223 wild chambering and are available in 18, 20, and 24 inch stainless steel barrel configurations. They come with a thread protector instead of a muzzle device, likely so you can run a can. They come with a two stage trigger, Magpul stock and grip, M lock handguard, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's kind of what you would expect. It's geared towards. Varmint hunting guys that like that sort of thing. MSRPs go from 1103 for the 18 inch and go up to 1129 for the 24 inch. And honestly, that's not that bad if these things shoot well. That's going to be sort of the make or break here. If these can't hold at least inch and a half groups at 100, it's trash. Time will tell though. Also in new guns is High Point. I was not expecting this one. They've got two new versions of their carbine, sort of. Say hello to the 995P and the 4595P. Essentially, these are chopped down versions of their full-size carbines. The barrel length on the 45 is 14.25 inches, which is three and a quarter inches shorter than normal. And the 17 and a half, what the f high point? The nine mil has a 13.25 inch barrel. No idea why it's an inch shorter. And They've chopped off the rear stock and replaced it with a plate that accepts an AR style buffer tube. It actually comes with one of those pick rail things on the rear, but it can also take a buffer tube. That's cool. Otherwise, these are exactly the same as the carbine, same mag, same everything. MSRP for the nine is 399 and the 45's MSRP is 461. I honestly can't decide if I love them or hate them. They're kind of goofy, but I kind of want one. One of the most requested types of content that I've been asked about from you guys is sort of longer, more in-depth interviews with cool people in the industry. I've asked for suggestions and that always comes up top. Manufacturers, content creators, subject matter experts, that sort of thing. I've been doing exactly that on the Gun Collective podcast channel, and it would be awesome if you guys went over there and got subscribed, check it out, look at a few of the recent episodes, and let me know what you guys think in terms of guests. If there are specific people that you want to see on there, you want to know more about them, let me know. I can probably get most of them to be on there. I've had politicians, national security experts, all the gun tubers I can think of, and gun brands on there. And I'd love to keep that trend rolling. In more new gun news, Palmetto State Armory just released a 300 blackout version of their Soviet arms crank. Well, five versions to be correct. It wouldn't be PSA if they did it in one flavor, right? That's not how they roll. All of them center around the same setup and have slightly different accoutrements. At the core, you have an AK-74 chambered in 300 blackout with an 8.4 inch barrel, the M24 by 1.5 inch threading to accommodate 
the classic crink like wire cutting brake thing that actually ends up being a flamethrower. And depending on the model, you could have an M-lock rail with a triangle brace or some glossy wood furniture and nothing on the back. The fancier models also come with an ALG trigger, which is a nice touch. That's a very nice trigger for an AK. And if you want a suppressed AK, this is probably a great option for keeping things very quiet. MSRPs start around 1300 and go up from there. Is it worth it? That's going to be your call. I kind of want one. Maybe. Oh, here's an idea. Maybe in 338 ARC. That would be cool. And HK USA released a ground up new gun for the first time in years. It's called the CC9 and it's pretty interesting. At the core, you have a chassis-based striker fired 9mm with a 3.3-inch barrel, 10-round flush-fit mag, 12-round extended mag, and a couple other things like RMSC, optic cut, ambi controls, two back straps, and a pick rail under the nose, which isn't super common. Not every gun in this size category has one. They are claiming that this has been through the absolute ringer when it comes to reliability testing through sand, dust, mud... Some, I, I can't really think of another thing that you would want to test this for, but sure, that probably too. The MSRP on this thing is 700 and that puts it on the higher end of this style of small gun. It's not Kimber-style lunacy when it comes to pricing, but it's not cheap. I have a couple things that are small gripes here. I wish I could get it with the paddle release like my VP9 that I've been carrying for years instead of the button release. I prefer the paddles. I think... All guns should have that option because I think paddle release is actually really good. And I wish the texture on this gun was a bit more aggressive. I do have one of these in hand, but I don't really want to turn this into a review. The gun's actually right back there. I don't want to turn this into a full-on review. So what I will say is that it's not perfect, but it has been reliable for me so far. I've seen a lot of talk on the posts of this gun on social media about how they're copying one brand or another and I don't really think that's fair because that means every gun in this category is copying each other because they're all very similar. It is way late to the party of micro compacts, but it is entirely possible that's still a pretty good gun. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about this down in the comments. Also, a bunch of people in the comments have been asking why the videos are getting cut off at the end. And all I can say is 